Okay, so uh, we'll start, we'll do unit four. I don't know why I'm doing it out of order, but I am. Okay, because uh, unit four is freshest in our mind. We'll be able to go through it really quick. Okay, uh, remember what climate is. Climate's the prevailing weather at a location. Remember the difference between the components and the factors. The factors make the components what they are. Okay, latitude affects intensity and amount of light. Okay, uh, altitude can affect temperature. Ocean currents can affect temperature and precipitation and wind. Okay, all those kinds of things. So we got to remember kind of how those work. Um, probably those will be more multiple choice type items. I mean, there could be some things that you could work it into an answer in the written response, but you kind of know how those work. Okay, remember the effect that each one can have on the components of climate and you're pretty much set. Okay, questions on that part? Okay, climatograms, okay, it's same as, same as your unit exam. In the written response, there will be a climatogram and you'll have to tell me which biome it comes from. Okay, look at it carefully. Look at the scale. Okay, make sure that the lines are not misleading you into thinking a really dry area is really wet or vice versa. Okay, uh, look at the temperature line, okay, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so it's same as same as your unit exam. Okay, you'll have to know your biomes well enough to know what their climatograms will look like. Okay, for the biomes, identify from a picture or description. I think there's two in the multiple choice okay, of the test, two or three. Okay, same as on your unit exam. There'll be a picture, there'll be a description. You got to pick the right one. Uh, water cycle, you know, it's in there. There's a couple of questions. Right, it's not hard. It's just Remember what each step is. Oh, yeah, definitely multiple. Yeah. No, no. Water cycle and biomes will be, well, the biomes in the climatogram question are written response, but uh, the rest of it is all in the multiple choice. Okay. A, a lot of this unit is the multiple choice. Okay. Because this unit is the shortest one. It counts for the least amount of marks on the final. Okay. Because it is the shortest unit. Uh, they're all pretty close. Okay, so what it was, a hundred and... 136 marks in total, and I think it was like, this one was around 30 marks, and the others were like 40, okay, so it's, um, yeah, it's, this is, this is the smallest one, okay, for sure. Okay, um, all right, heat transfer, you definitely need to know the three methods of heat transfer. You had that Quincy question on your unit exam. Expect something like that as an application of your knowledge of the methods of heat transfer. Okay, on the, on the final exam, be able to, you know, talk about the three methods. Here's how I would stop or harness this method of heat transfer. Here's how I would stop or harness this method of heat transfer. Okay, things like that. Um, I would also say as a tip, all right, think about, if you had uh, a device that either heats the room or cools the room artificially, where would be the best position to put it? Okay, so yes, we're gonna have, we'll wanna either harness or insulate depending on the situation against these three things, okay? But if you were also allowed to have like a refrigeration unit or a heater, okay, where would you put those in a room that would make them most efficient? Okay, again, probably thinking about these and how they work, all right? Okay, um, and then yeah, remember which states these occur in, right? Convections for liquids and gases, conductions for solids, radiation is movement by waves, okay? Questions on that? Okay, energy budgets, remember the three things that can happen to energy when it strikes the Earth's surface. It can be reflected, it can be absorbed, it can be converted by plants using photosynthesis, okay? Uh, what, what determines how much is reflected or absorbed? This, okay? It's an important term. Expect there's probably going to be some multiple choice about that, okay? Um, and you had to apply. The question on your unit exam for these was the sunlight hitting the section of prairie near Okotoks, okay? Um, something similar to that. Okay, probably not in the written, but probably in the multiple choice. Okay, so yeah, if it's reflected, there's no change in energy. If it's absorbed, temperature will increase. Okay, and if it's converted, the chemical energy will increase because we're turning the solar energy into sugar. Okay, and that'll start all of our food chains. Okay, high albedo means highly reflective. Okay, there was a little bit of trouble with that, having it 
the other way, saying that there was that multiple choice question about the dust landing on the ice, and people got confused and got albedo backwards. Okay, high albedo is high reflectivity, low albedo is high absorption. All right, heat capacity equals MC delta T. All right, so if we have an example uh, problem here. All right, uh, where, where am I going to ask you a easy problem on specific heat capacity? Written response or multiple choice? That, it's got to be multiple choice this time. I'm not going to waste five marks in the written and have you spend all that time. Okay, uh, it's... It's going to be a pretty straightforward one, okay, where it's going to be most likely multiple choice. All right, so in this case, what's the mass of an aluminum pot that when heated with 5,000 joules of energy increases in temperature by 20 degrees Celsius? All right, well, I know it's aluminum, okay, and I know that the specific heat capacity of aluminum is 0 0.9. I think, I think it's 0.9. Okay, C equals 0.9. Uh, and then we know that delta T is 20 degrees Celsius, and we know that the energy is 5,000 joules. Okay, so we got E equals MC delta T. Okay, we manipulate that for mass. Okay, and then we'll have that uh, mass equals 5,000 okay, divided by 0.9 times 20. Okay. 277 grams. All right. Everybody with me there? It's ringing a bell. We didn't have any trouble with that on the unit exam. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, sorry. With uh, with the heat capacity, could I ask you multiple choice questions also about what heat capacity is? Okay. Probably expect there's one or two on that. Heating curve. Where am I going to ask that? Written response. No doubt about it. It's in there. Okay, um, so make sure that you go over some of the practice problems to do with the heating curve of water. Okay, remembering that on the heating curve of water, anywhere where the line is diagonal or increasing, that means the temperature is changing and thus the kinetic thermal energy is changing and E equals MC delta T finds the change in kinetic thermal energy. Okay, for any place where the line is flat, we are changing state, that means we're changing potential thermal energy. So for the flat part at zero degrees, that's the latent heat of fusion, E equals MLF, okay? And for the flat part at 100 degrees, okay, that's E equals MLV, the latent heat of vaporization. Okay, what else do you have to remember about delta T for all of these steps? Right. Okay, if I'm going from minus 30 to 130, my temperature change is not 160. Okay, my temperature change is 30, 130. Okay, it's, it's not going to be ice or water the entire time. You have to make sure that, you know, you have your, your temperature change specific to that step, as with the specific heat capacity. Okay, down here, I've got to use the specific heat for ice. Here, the specific heat for uh, for water, and here, the specific heat for steam. Then you know. Yes, uh, yeah, definitely. Okay, so you'll get all of those on the test. It's all on the data sheet that's on the back of the periodic table, I believe. It's all on there. I double-checked. I just don't remember if it's on the back of the periodic table now or somewhere else. It's there. All right, and then latent heat, do you need to know what that is? Okay, is that part of energy transfers in a global system, right? Plays a big part. What special wind does the majority of moving latent heat? Jet stream, okay. Could you be expected to explain something like that? Yeah, okay. There's probably going to be a question that's really going to look at the whole unit in terms of what what roles do winds play and how do they work and you know combining that with Coriolis and jet stream and the methods of heat transfer and I'm probably going to find a way to ask you explain how this system works okay how does energy really move you had a question that was kind of like that okay, in the written response of your unit exam maybe something a little more in depth okay, for the final that's 
got to work that stuff together. Okay, so wind patterns, obviously you need to know what the jet stream is, you need to know what the Coriolis effect is, okay? I would say that this is probably not a written response item on its own, like it was on your unit exam, but it could be part of a written response item, okay? If we're looking at, again, that whole global system kind of a question. Uh, and then, of course, jet stream would be part of that, latent heat's part of that, convection's part of that, okay? Um, Yeah, but in and of themselves, like by themselves, they won't be written response items, but they could be part of a bigger answer. They could all be multiple choice items by themselves. Okay, so know what the jet stream is in case I you know, give a description of a jet stream and you have to tell me whether it's Coriolis effect, jet stream, trade winds, or I don't know. I'm not thinking of a fourth one right now, but you get the idea. Okay, something along those lines. All right, questions on the wind patterns? Okay, make sure you understand those whole prevailing winds thing too. Okay, that, that's the combination of convection and the Coriolis effect working together to create those prevailing winds. Anyone still need that? Yes, no? All right, physics. Sorry, were there any other questions on uh, the global wind pattern, or on the, uh, sorry, global systems and energy? Okay. okay, we had a couple of questions like this early on in, uh, in the physics unit. A bus travels 10 kilometers north in 0.25 hours and then travels 4 kilometers south in 0 0.10 hours, then travels north 2 kilometers in 0 0.08 hours. Okay, what is the velocity and speed of the bus? Okay, I'm looking at average velocity and average speed of the bus here over the entire trip. So what do I need to do? Average velocity equals and right. If it's average velocity, then it's d total, okay, over t total. Okay. If it's speed, then it's distance total over time total. Okay. Instead of displacement total. Everybody follow? All right. So let's. We got to break this up then into the three parts. Okay. In part one, we know that the uh, Displacement is 10 kilometers north, and the time is 0.25 hours. Okay, and then in part two, okay, we have a displacement of 4 kilometers south and a time of 0 0.10 hours. Okay, and then part three. Okay, um, point oh, or sorry, we have uh, two kilometers north and a time of 0 0.08 hours. All right, so in one like this, this one's pretty easy because I didn't get a speed or a velocity for any of the three parts, so I actually don't have to do any secondary calculations there. Um, what I need here is total displacement for the first part for velocity. So what's my total displacement? 10 north plus 4 south is 6 north, plus 2 north is 8 north. You guys follow me here? All right, All right. so our total displacement then okay, is 8 kilometers north, and our total time, 0 0.35, um, 0 0.42, right? 0 0.43, sorry, 0 0.43 hours. All right, so 8 kilometers north over 0 0.43 hours. is 18.6 what? Kilometers per hour north, right? Got to have its velocity, right? It's a vector quantity, okay? So 18.6 kilometers per hour north. All right, what if I want to get total speed? How do I do this differently? Or average speed, not total speed. Then Right, and how do I get the total distance? What's different? 
I just add everything up. Okay, direction doesn't matter. 14, 16. All right, so 16 over 0.43. All right, well, it's going to be twice as fast then. Okay, all right, it's going to be twice. It's going to be twice the number because this was eight and this was 16. Right, so um, 18.6 times two. Oh, we'll just check it anyway. 16 divided by 0.43. Okay, yeah, 37.21 kilometers per hour. Do I need a direction on that? Nope. Ringing a bell? Okay. I would say I probably wouldn't have a V equals D over T question that in depth on a final exam, but you could have a V equals D over T calculation in the multiple choice, okay, something like that. Um, certainly, you're going to need to be able to use V equals D over T at some point on the final exam. Anybody still need that one? Okay, thermodynamics. That was actually the first thing we talked about in the in the unit. Okay, um, we took that out, so we didn't actually talk about that. First law of thermodynamics is the law of conservation of energy. Energy can't be created, it can't be destroyed, okay? If you input energy, it has to be turned into something else, okay? If you do work, it's gonna be turned into some other kind of energy, that's the first law, okay? Second law, energy flows from hot to cold, okay? Or from low energy to high energy, okay? And any conversion of energy means energy is going to be lost to where? Starts with S. The surroundings, right? Okay, that was the thing. Okay, remember it was the combination of these two things that forbid the existence of a perpetual motion machine. Okay, anything that converts one form of energy to another loses energy because no energy conversion is 100% efficient. All right. So, could there be some multiple choice questions that ask you to apply your knowledge of the laws of thermodynamics? Most certainly there will be, okay? There will not be any written response items that ask you to apply your knowledge of the laws of thermodynamics, okay? That'll all be multiple choice. What are all the written response questions for this unit going to be? Calculations. Calculations. They're going to be problem solving, okay? Acceleration, work energy theorem, law of conservation of energy, okay? Things like that. All right, Skydriver jumps out of a plane, okay, and strikes the ground 41 seconds later. Okay, so we got our acceleration problem here. Okay, so we'll just go over an example of that. Okay, um, and strikes the ground 41 seconds later. How fast was he going when he hits the ground? Well, how fast was he going vertically when he jumped out of the plane? He wasn't, right? Like, you don't really jump out of a plane, you kind of step out of the plane, okay? So you're not moving vertically when you first start. So his initial vertical velocity was zero, okay? We're looking for how fast he's going when he strikes the ground, because apparently his parachute doesn't open, right? Because otherwise he wouldn't accelerate at what rate? 9.81, okay? That's the whole purpose of a parachute, is to make sure that this number does not apply to you. If that number applies to you, you're in really big trouble, okay? Uh, and then our time here uh, was 41 seconds. All right, uh, so we got our A equals VF minus VI over T. How do I get VF by itself? Remember, we have that half rule. Move what's not attached first, so I move. The T first, right? I'm looking for VF. T is not attached to VF, so I multiply both sides by T. What do I do with VI? Add it. Doesn't really matter. It was zero anyway, but okay, we'll do it just for the sake of showing how it works. So zero plus 41 times 9.81. So whatever 41 times 9.81 is, 402. Whoa. I didn't pick very good numbers there. That guy broke the sound barrier by a considerable margin. So he was probably dead before he hit the ground. Breaking the sound barrier is kind of hard on things. All right. Everybody follow me on that one. Yeah? Okay. Manipulating equations. Remember our, our rules. Okay. The rules were, okay, if you do it to one side, do it to the other side. If I want to move something, do the 
opposite and move what's not attached first. Okay, those are our rules of algebra, so we got to remember those. Okay, uh, so conservation of energy question. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so in this question we have the cart at the top of a hill whose height is unknown. It is moving at 4 meters per second. Shortly thereafter, it is at the top of a 10 meter hill moving at 32 meters per second. We need to find the height of the first hill. All right, there's no forces here that are doing work other than gravity. So our energy at the beginning equals our energy at the end. What kind or kinds of energy does it have at the beginning? Okay, it definitely has potential. So we got some M times G times H initial. Does it have anything else? It's got some kinetic because it's also moving. Okay, now what about at the end? Same, yeah, it's got both at the end too. All right, so we've got those, and did it give me the mass? Do I need the mass? Okay, will I give you the mass on the final exam? I will, okay, just because I don't want people to get freaked out. Okay, some people don't cancel the mass, and that's fine, okay, but I'll give it to you. All right, I'm going to cancel mass because I hate having extra numbers and things. Okay, um, I want to solve for the initial height of the roller coaster. So what should I do with this? Subtract it over to the other side. Really all I'm doing is subtracting the kinetic energy initial over to the other side. So I'm going to have GHI equals GHF plus one half VF squared minus, um, whoops, put the wrong thing there, minus one half VI squared. Okay, I want H by itself. What do I have to do with the G? Divide both sides by G. All right, and I'm done because H isn't squared. That's a really common mistake. If I ask people to solve for H, for some reason they square root. I don't know why. H isn't squared. Okay. Now I just plug in my numbers. So we'll just do that on the calculator because I'm running out of room there. Okay, so 9.81 times the final height, which was 10. Okay, uh, plus 0.5 times uh, 32 squared minus um, 0 0.5 times 4 squared equals, okay, divided by 9.81. All right, so the initial height is 61.38 meters. Ring a bell? Danielle, you're giving me the crooked face. What, what, where did I lose you? Yep. How did I move this? Okay, I subtracted it. It's right here. Right? It, it's really what I did. Okay, if I don't have this expanded, um, so just let me move this down a little ways. Okay, there's a step in here that I didn't draw this time, okay, and that is that I have EP initial plus EK initial equals EP final minus EK final, right? And I subtracted this term over to this side. That's what that part was, yeah? I just did it after I plugged the formula in, which I don't normally do. Okay, any other questions on that one? Should you expect one of those? Yes. Okay, there's one of those. Getting enough big juicy hints about what's on the test? That's why you show up on the last day. Yeah, always a good idea, especially in university. I totally found that showing up on the last day of university class was really important. Profs gave out all kinds of tips about the test. Now, they probably don't do that now with social media because I was before all of that because I'm old. Okay, so it was harder to tell everybody what was on the test. I don't know if they do it anymore. Okay, all right, um, next one. Work energy theorem. How important is that? 
Very, it's the most important thing. I think I said that about a million times during the physics unit. Work energy theorem is the most important concept in high school science, maybe science in general. All right, work is a change in energy. How do we calculate change in energy? We do that. That's, the same, that's how you calculate change in anything. Final minus initial, whatever you're finding the change in. Okay, energy, displacement, whatever it happens to be. Okay, it's always final minus initial. All right, so in this case here, okay, we might set force times distance equal to the change in kinetic energy. Lots of times, the ones we did, the initial kinetic energy or potential energy was zero, quite often. Okay, it's not always, but quite often it was. Um, so we could have FD equals M times G times H final minus M times G times H initial as well. Okay, that's what we got to remember. I'm going to exert a force over a distance. I'm going to do work. The final energy is going to be greater than the initial energy. Or if it's doing work against something else, it might lose energy and the final might be less than the initial. How many problems did you expect on that? I mean, there's two kinds of energy, right? Potential and kinetic. Okay. Is there going to be some stuff in the multiple choice about this? Yeah, probably some like situational apply your knowledge kind of questions like, you know, uh, this object exerts a force over a distance on this. What things could happen to that object? A, its speed could increase. B, it could get higher. C, nothing. D, everything. I don't know, I'm not thinking of a fourth one. But, okay, you guys follow me on that? Okay, could be those kind of things that ask, do you understand what happens in the real world as opposed to the mathematical world like this, okay, when these kinds of things happen? That's it. That's what's there. Okay. I'm not going to ask trivia on the final exam. Okay. If there is, there might be one just because it slipped by me when I was putting it in there. I might have thought, oh, I'll do that and just forgot about it. Um, but yeah, it, I wouldn't spend a ton of time going over people and places and dates and things like that. All right. Questions that you guys want to have answered? Oh, like the thermocouple and stuff? No, because again, that's associated with the name. So I'm going to say no on that one. If I asked you something about a machine, I would describe what the machine did, and it would be more about what is this machine doing? It's converting this type of energy to that type. That would probably be more what I would ask. Right. Uh, how many multiple choice? 50 multiple choice, and there's 87 marks in the written. I think there's 15. I'll just call it up here, and I'll give you the details. Um. Okay. Oh, no. The questions on the test do go in unit order. Okay, I'm not sporad I'm not randomly putting physics in with chemistry on the exam. That way you get a frame of mind. Or if you want to do a particular unit first, go right ahead and do that. Okay, it's labeled multiple choice unit one, and then there's a bunch of chem questions, and then it's unit two, and there's a bunch of biology questions. So they're all together if you're wanting to do that. If you do the multiple choice out of order, make sure you fill in the right bubbles on the bubble sheet. Okay, that's the only issue with doing the multiple choice out of order. Now, do you have to do the written response in order? What did we say that was a good idea to do? Oh yeah, definitely do the written response first. But when you go through the written response, do the ones you're sure you know how to do first. Okay, do the ones you're most confident in first. Then you feel good. And you have a better chance of doing better on the other ones. Okay, I always did that. Okay, especially in 
organic chemistry where the first time through I only knew three out of 27 questions. Yeah. Okay. By the time I was done that three-hour test, I was pretty sure I had nine or ten of them right. Pretty sure. Not 100% sure. But it's okay, because I still passed the course, not the test. I got the class average, 37%. That's how university works. As long as you can do better than half the people, you can pass. I did better than half the people at 37%. As you could tell, I had a pretty crappy prof. Yeah. Didn't understand most of what he said. Okay, um, so for chemistry, 16 multiple choice questions for chemistry. Eleven multiple choice for biology. Uh, Twelve. No, sorry, not 12, 11, 11 for um, physics and 10 for global systems. I hope that adds up to 100, 10, 10 for global systems. So. Okay, and then in the written response, okay, um, for chemistry, we're looking at, what are we here, 3, 11, 19, 27, 27 marks, 27 marks in the written response for chemistry. That's four, but there's A, B, and C for some of them, right? Like it's balanced, like the first one's balancing, so there's, you know, there's balance these three equations, okay? Um, so it's like I told you the other day, you got some balancing, you're going to have some, here's a whole reaction, write it out for me, balanced, and identify the type, and then they'll be, predict these reactions, okay? And then they'll be mole. And then for biology, 6, 11, 15, 20, 20 marks on biology in the written four questions. For physics, 5, 10, 15, 21, 21 marks for physics, 21, four, four questions, 21 marks. Three written response for global systems, 9, 11, 19 marks. Three questions. Okay, so it, like I said, it's marks wise, it's pretty even. Okay, unit to unit with global systems coming in a little behind the others. Okay. Now, guys, it's it's a big test. Okay, it's a final exam, so by its nature, it's a big test. You need to watch your time. Okay, that's why I'm saying. Do the written response first because there's way more marks there. You can always rush through the multiple choice. And the multiple choice, I think you'll do fairly quickly. Okay? Um, like There's only a few questions where you might actually have to stop and do a quick calculation or something like that. That might take you like a full minute and a half or two minutes to do. But I think in general, you're going to be able to do several questions per minute in the multiple choice. Okay? Like, I would imagine that at some points you may even be going as high as three questions per minute in the multiple choice, all right, if you're going quickly. Um, so you can do the multiple choice quickly. I would say start with the written, and after an hour and let's say 10 minutes, hour and 15 minutes, you should be done the written, 
okay? If you're not, okay, then you might want to kind of look at how much do I have left, okay, and, and start kind of planning how quickly you're going to get through the multiple choice. Yeah. Two hours. That's it. After two hours, you're done. Okay? There's no extra half hour. I don't know where people get that. It's two hours plus a half hour. That's a two and a half hour test. This is a two hour test. Okay? That means when two hours is over, you're done. Whether you're done or not, you're done. Okay? So make sure that you're watching the clock in the gym. Okay? You'll be facing the west walls of the gym, and on the west wall of the gym is that red digital clock. Okay? So keep an eye on that, or take your watch off and put it on your desk okay? so that you can see it. Well, I'm really fast, actually. Yeah, it took me about a half an hour, 40 minutes, something like that. Okay. You got to remember, though, I made up the questions. So as I make up the questions, I also know exactly how to solve them because I, I'm thinking about that in my head, right? So, yeah. It's, but, I mean, you do that, you multiply that by three or four, and that's getting pretty close to the time limit, right? So um, you're, you're going to be there till close to the end if you do a good job. If you rush, you could be done earlier than that, but then you might not have done a good job. Okay? It's not a race. Okay? We don't want anyone to, you know, Oh, hey, I was done in an hour and just, you know, kind of strut out. That's not going to work out well. Okay, make sure you take your time, okay, but watch the clock. Time is a factor on this test, so you do need to watch the clock. Then you didn't get it done. So fill out the bumble sheet. Yeah, uh, like honestly, it, we have to be kind of mean about that. If after two hours, we yank the test. Yeah? Okay. Did I tell you a story about the guy in university that I had my oh, in that organic chem test that I wrote? This guy was we got the warning because I was still writing. The three hours were up, and they're like, "If you don't hand in your test now, you'll get a zero. So I'm like, oh, "Crap! I got to get whatever I can." I know I'm not getting very good, so I handed in my test, and there's this guy who just kept writing. He kept writing, kept writing. I'm like, "I got to watch this tragedy unfold." So I stood there and I kind of watched, and uh, the person, the TA, got up to go and take his test, and he just got out of his desk with the test, walked up to the pile, and he'd been writing for like another seven or eight minutes past the limit. And the prof looked at him and goes, you can't hand that in, you wrote past the time. And he looks at him and goes, do you know who I am? And I'm like, what, is he like the dean's kid, like, or whatever, something like that, like he's going to get away with it? And the prof, of course, there's a class of 400 people, he doesn't know who he is. No, I don't know who you are. He picks up half the stack of tests, slips his test in the middle and goes, dunk, dunk, on the pile says something awful to the prof and walks out. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, wow. That is brave. Very brave. And ignorant, but brave. Uh, I just, this is not something that in my, it's in my personal makeup. I just would have never thought to do something like that. Yeah. At the time, I was just like, my jaw was you know, by my knees. I couldn't believe someone had done that. I know all your names, so that trick won't work. Okay? Yeah. All right. Other questions about the final? Anything you want me to review or go over that we haven't already? Okay. Well, you got some more time to, to do your study in here uh, and figure out if there is anything else you want to ask. And if there is, I'll go over it. Okay? Yes. Attention. Okay, I didn't have it in here in the review part, but graphing. Okay, uh, there is are are a couple of graphing questions um, in the multiple choice graph graphing about like interpreting the graph, uh, and also in the uh, written response. One of them, okay, is a graph, and you have to interpret it. There's not a lot of calculating to do with graphs, but there's still some stuff to do with graphs. Not as much as the unit exam. Okay? Not as heavily weighted as it was on the unit exam, but there's still some there. 